Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Izzy T from PowerliftingToWin.com, and today we're going to talk about bench press form leverages. So this is going to be very similar to the video I did on squat form leverages. The whole, a lot of the concepts that I'm going to talk about rest on your understanding of what a moment arm is. So I'm going to give you the very brief version, and if you don't get it, you can check the description box. I'm going to put a link to a video I made called Powerlifting Leverages that really explains the concept in a lot more detail. So if you've ever used a wrench before, you know that the longer the wrench handle, the easier it is to turn the bolt, the more leverage that you have. You can say that the length of that handle is a moment arm, okay? And the length of the moment arm represents the amount of moment force, the force that tends to cause rotation about an axis, or the bolt, right? And the longer the moment arm, or the longer the wrench handle, the more leverage, but also the shorter the wrench handle, the less leverage. And here's the thing, when we're lifting weights, our joints are the bolt. So what our job is to do as a power lifter, one of them anyways, is to make sure that those moment arms are as short as possible. We don't want the long wrench handle because that makes it easier to turn our joints and harder for us to overcome that leverage. So let's take a look at all the ways in the bench press that we can reduce the relevant moment arms. Okay, so the first and most important thing that we need to establish for this discussion is that the shoulder joint is the fulcrum of the bench press, okay? It is the bolt that the wrench, which is the bar, is going to be trying to turn. So when we have the bar directly over the shoulder, there is no moment arm. The bar is directly in line with the joint. But whenever it gets forward or backwards of that joint, we've introduced a moment arm. So let's take a look at what that looks like. The distance between the bar and the shoulder joint here, represented by those orange arrows, is the wrench handle, right? We want to avoid creating these moment arms at all costs because it adds leverage to the lift. It makes 405 harder than 405 should be. So I'm sure some of you guys have realized that essentially what I'm doing is advocating for a straight bar path. Now there is a huge problem with having a straight bar path in the bench press. The shoulder is a highly complex joint and it is not built to bench press efficiently. What ends up happening if you try to bench in a straight line, which would only be made possible by flaring your elbows out at 90 degrees, is that you get the rotator cuff literally being pinched in between the bones in the shoulder joint themselves. And what can happen over time if you do this is the slight contact between the bones and the joint actually slowly cuts into the rotator cuff. And if you do this for long enough, you can actually sever the rotator cuff. And it's why the bench has a reputation as a shoulder destroyer. So here's the thing. In order to avoid shoulder impingement, we cannot bench press in a straight line. What this is going to do is it's going to create a moment arm between the shoulder and the bar. Now, as power lifters, we do have a few tricks that we can use to still minimize that moment arm without impinging our shoulders. Almost everybody knows that if you have short arms, you're gonna be a better bench presser. And there's two reasons for this. One, it's gonna decrease your range of motion, obviously, right? But the second one is that you're not gonna to have to touch as far away from your shoulder joint because given a certain degree of shoulder abduction, and shoulder abduction is the degree to which your humerus is rotated outwards. So, if you have your arms completely parallel to the bar, rotated out at 90 degrees, your, your degree of shoulder abduction would be 90 degrees. If you have 75 degree shoulder abduction, if you have shorter arms, you're gonna be able to touch closer to your chest because your arms just aren't as long, so you don't need to touch so far away, right? Well, we can artificially make our arms shorter in powerlifting by taking a wider grip on the bar. Now, what I want you to do is look at those yellow arrows in the picture. Notice how far the bar is away from the uprights. In the left picture over here, I'm taking a pretty narrow grip, thumbs away from the smooth. And in the picture on the right here, that's a maximum legal grip with my fingers on the power rings. Notice that the difference between these two grips is easily two or three inches. This mimics having shorter arms, which both cuts our range of motion 
and cuts down on the moment arm created between the shoulder and the bar when we're trying to avoid impingement. Now the second trick we can use is something a lot of you will be familiar with already as well, and that is using an arched back position. So on the right hand side over here, you can see I'm essentially laying flat on the bench. Everybody's spine has at least a little curve to it, so it's impossible to be completely flat. But on the left, I've really endeavored to set up a big arch, and you'll notice that this is lifting my chest way higher. Look at my elbows in both pictures. On the left with the arch, they're above the bench pad. On the right without an arch, they're well below the bench pad. So having a big arch is one of the most important things that you can develop for great powerlifting technique. It's gonna cut down on the range of motion and simultaneously, because it cuts down on the range of motion, it's going to allow you to touch closer to your shoulder joint because you're only going to get impingement once you have a certain degree of shoulder rotation given a certain amount of shoulder abduction. And that's a mouthful, but essentially all it's saying is that impingement only happens at a certain point in the range of motion. And if you can avoid that part of the range of motion because you have a huge arch, well, now you can touch closer, right? While both arching and taking a wider grip can be pretty helpful on their own, when you combine them together, you get a very powerful effect. So. Remember all this talk about minimizing the moment arms to improve our leverage? Well, take a look at the left picture and compare it to the right picture. On the left, we have I'm arching my back and taking the max legal grip width. On the right, I'm taking a thumbs away from the smooth grip with a flat back. Both of those orange arrows are exactly the same size. You can see that I've cut the length of the moment arm there by 30 40%. That's 30 to 40% less leverage that I'm going to have to overcome to have a successful lift. That makes all of the weights that I do easier. Guys, one thing I do want you to know is that we have two goals. We want to minimize range of motion and we want to minimize the moment arms. But sometimes those two goals conflict with each other and you have to make a compromise between maximizing one or the other. So you can see here on the left, that is a very straight bar path, right? I'm not gonna really be able to get the bar any closer to my shoulders without impingement. On the right, however, the bar is really far away from my shoulders, in fact. It's more of like a geared bench technique. But compare the elbow height of both positions. The one on the right is going to have a much shorter vertical range of motion than the technique on the left. So sometimes you have to figure out through experimentation what works best for you. And unfortunately, this is one of those times. Personally, I tend to use a technique that is in between both of these. I make a compromise. I touch not quite the highest part of my arch, but I also don't touch as close to my shoulders as I can either. And this seems to produce the best results for me. You'll have to play with it yourself to see what works for you. Okay, I want to make one final note about bar paths. So we know that we can't bench in a straight line directly over our shoulder without impingement, but that doesn't mean that there isn't an ideal bar path that we can follow. And the ideal bar path in the bench press is going to be a J curve. The reason for this is pretty simple. We want to get the bar directly over our shoulders as soon as we can, because when the bar is directly over our shoulders, there is no moment arm between the bar and our shoulders. So a J curve is better than say a backwards diagonal line because in a J curve, more of the range of motion is spent directly over the shoulders. So when you're benching, your initial drive is actually going to be back and up. And once the bar clicks into that groove above your shoulders, you'll drive straight up towards lockout. And just so you guys know that I practice what I preach, I'm going to include a video here of my first 315 plus competition bench. And you can see I'm using the exact form that I'm talking about here. In this video, to uh, make it YouTube length so that you guys don't get too bored, I cut out a lot of the details. So if you want more details, if you want more explanations, more in-depth stuff, go ahead and check out the link that I'm going to put in the description box, which will go to the original article about this topic on my website. If you guys liked this video and you want more like it, make sure you subscribe because tomorrow I'm going to be putting out a video of how to actually bench like a power lifter. It's going to be less theory and more how you set up an arch, exactly how much elbow tuck you should have, the best tips, tricks, and form cues, and things like that that increase your bench performance. So enjoy the video, and as always, check out powerliftingtowin.com for more great powerlifting information. Yeah,